So in a recent video, we showed you guys a real-world test of how much RAM you actually needed in a gaming PC in 2024. And it turns out that you didn't quite like the machine that I was using. There were a number of reasons for that that you stated quite clearly in the comments. So today I've built a system based on your specifications, but will it actually make any difference to the results at all? Well, there's only one way to find out. Now in our previous video, we did a bit of testing with 8GB, 16GB and 32GB of RAM in a system that is purely designed for gaming to see if it would actually make much of a difference and also tell us how much RAM you would actually need in a gaming PC. The results of that test actually didn't really tell us much at all apart from the fact that it didn't really matter. If you were having 8GB, you had a slightly less FPS. If you had 16GB or 32, it's pretty much exactly the same. And we tested in that video some really demanding games, but there were a few issues with the system that we used that you guys quite rightly pointed out. The system that we used was our normal bench and rig. So for the CPU, we had an AMD Ryzen 7 5800X 3D. Of course, that CPU would be able to take advantage of its 3D V cache. We were running all of the games in a 1440p high preset, which some of you guys said would probably cause an issue. And also for the graphics card, we used the AMD Radeon RX 7900 XT. Now, the reason you raise that as a potential issue is because that graphics card actually comes with 20 gigabytes of VRAM. So that may have compensated a little bit, but I wasn't quite sure at the time. So instead, I've built this system. Now, this system is much more entry level than the previous one that we used. I actually just cobbled it together with a few parts, but we do meet all of the criteria here. For the CPU, we have the Intel Core i5-12600KF. It's a pretty modest CPU nowadays. It's three generations old. You can pick them up for around £140. So even budget gamers would have a good opportunity of getting this one. For the graphics card, we have pretty much the most entry level graphics card on the current AMD generation, the RX 7600 gigabytes which also does have some weird quirks with its PCIe generation particularly on how many PCI lanes it can use so overall this system is a much more modest system but there is no 3d v cache we are going to be running all games in 1080p this time and of course only having an 8 gigabyte graphics card will this though make any difference at all well there's only one way to find out so we're going to benchmark it let's get the machine hooked up now we've got the system all hooked up and everything is working beautifully fine. It's a very nice quiet system and you tend to get that with the lower end parts. For anybody wondering, for the uh, CPU cooler there, we've got one of the biggest Intel coolers. It's actually pretty cool. It's got RGB. I bought it a long time ago and I thought this gave us a chance to use it. I'm not exactly sure what the name of it is, but sometimes it gets a little bit funny because the logo in the middle actually sits still. But if you just wobble it a little bit, it will spin for a while and then it'll settle down again. Maybe we'll do a video on that at some point because it is a pretty cool cooler. But if anybody's out there, I'll probably drop into the description below what model it is. I'll go look it up and you can all go check it out. They are pretty funny and they work flawlessly as well. Definitely worth checking out. But overall, for these tests, we're going to be using the exact same RAM as before. And for that, it is the uh, Patriot Viper DDR4 3600 megahertz. We're going to be retesting 8 gigabyte. 16 gigabyte 32 gigabyte with this little system and we're going to see if it really makes a difference now we're going to start our testing today with only eight gigabytes of ddr4 we have just stuck that in there and that's going to be running in single channel our last tests actually showed that eight gigabyte had a bigger difference between eight and 16 than 16 to 32 did and I think some of that was down to actually being in single channel and not dual channel, but we're going to run the test with that one and it'll give us a great baseline going forward. Of course, when you start the game with only eight gigabytes of DDR in the system, you're going to get this warning here, not enough physical memory, particularly on Alan Wake 2, which is the first game that we're going to test. It says that it does actually require 12 gigabytes to run properly, but by properly, it does actually run, to be honest. We've tested that in the last one and you saw that. What you need to do is click OK and just get into the game. Now, for those of you that watched the last video of course looking at the stats in this one are going to be much lower and that's because we've got a much lower end system here so don't pay too much attention to the maximum fps we're really looking for the differences between the different memories so far it's looking pretty good though in alan wake 2 with an rx 7600 we are getting around 66 frames per second at the moment so the game is still more than playable but we will head over into the settings once it's actually loaded and we'll see what kind of configuration we've got now that we've taken over control of the character we'll pop over to our options go to our graphics setting we are currently running in a 1080p resolution we have a lot of different effects turned on. So we've got motion blur, film grain, lens distortion, and we are actually going to be leaving it in a high preset. I'm pretty sure the system can cope with that just about for 60 FPS, but we'll keep running through it and we'll see what we can actually get. I don't think we'll need to lower the preset really to 
test how much RAM we need, but what we'll do is we'll go back into the game and then we'll do a lap around the block just like we did in the previous one and we'll see what kind of uh, performance we get. Now as the character's running forward at the moment we can see that there is no actual issues with the system loading anything, no assets seem to be popping up just miraculously in front of us. You can see there is a slight delay on things that uh, particularly shadows so that kind of effect really but Apart from that, you don't really notice it when you're kind of running around. The game looks absolutely fantastic on this preset with these settings, just like it would do with any system. And we're currently getting an average of around 60 FPS. Our 1% lows are pretty low there, so we're going to reset our stats because I'm not sure what happened there. But we are now dropping to around 32 frames per second on the 1% low. So we're getting about half of what our average is. That's very similar to what we were getting with the previous system, but... Apart from that, as we run around, we're still getting above 60 FPS on average. It means the game is more than playable, which is quite amazing, really, for a low-end system like this. Of course, if this is not acceptable to you and you have a system of this specification, you can always enable FSR or turn down the graphical preset. But so far, I've not really seen a need to. Everything is working perfectly fine. We'll keep running around here and we'll get back to the start. And that will be the full loop that we did on the previous one. Without having a built-in benchmark, it's really hard to repeat things, but generally this just gives you a good enough flavour. Now as we're coming up to the end here, we are dropping slightly on the averages, but it's now around 64 frames per second on average, with a 1% low of around 37, 38, it's just gone up a little bit there, back down to 37, so it's fluctuating around the high 30s. So that actually is the test here of only using 8 gigabytes with a more moderate system i wouldn't like to call it low end because i would say something on a previous generation would be more low end but for those actually buying brand new systems or building brand new systems this is probably the lowest you should actually aim for so it's really nice to know that the game will play it even with eight gigabytes of ram so now what we need to do is actually go through those tests again install 16 gigabytes of ram 32 gigabytes of ram and then we'll retest the other game that we did which was cyberpunk 2077 and we'll bring you guys some results but i'm not going to make you watch that we'll just skip ahead and get to those results Okay, so the results are in and I've got them right down here and I think you guys are going to be surprised again. In Alan Wake 2, running the game in 1080p with a high preset and only 8GB of DDR4, we managed to get an average of 64 frames per second with a 1% low of 34. You all saw that when we were actually playing the game. That is a pretty typical kind of score in here for this system, but I do say it is a little bit low on those 1% lows, particularly for those that like a very smooth experience. The memory allocation during that gameplay maxed out at around 6.0 gigabytes, so we didn't actually have any issues at all with our eight gigabytes. Then when we actually take a look at using 16 gigabytes, we still only managed to get an average of 66 frames per second with a 1% low of 38. The maximum allocation of memory here was 8.7 gigabytes, and clearly it was probably using it because we did get a slightly higher score in here, but overall it wasn't enough really to make a difference. We saw the same results here for 32 gigabytes, an average of 66 frames per second with a 1% low of 38, using a maximum allocation of 9.9 .9 gigabytes. So overall it makes no difference even with a low end system like this no 3dv cache no 20 gigabytes of vram alan wake 2 pretty much performs the same regardless of how much memory you use running the same tests again against cyberpunk 2077 again in a 1080p resolution with a high preset we saw pretty much the same results although overall the fps was a bit higher using 8 gigabytes we managed to get an average of 91 frames per second with a 1 percent low of 62 that means that the game was completely more than playable with 16 gigabytes, we managed to get an average of 93 frames per second with a 1% low of 73. And we saw the exact same result for 32 gigabytes as well. Memory allocations here were very similar to Alan Wake 2, where the 8 gigabytes only had a maximum allocation of 7.4 gigabytes, 16 gigabytes had a maximum allocation of 10.7 gigabytes and 32 gigabytes had a maximum allocation of 11.3 gigabytes. Of course, this just means that it clearly wasn't using the 11.3 gigabytes because it got the same results as 16 gigabytes. So again, with this game, there is pretty much no difference between all of them. Just to make things a little bit fairer and add a little bit of fun, we also tested Doom Eternal. We didn't test this one last time, but I thought maybe adding an older game that you can really push to some new kind of limits would actually make a bit of a difference but again we didn't really see that much at all 
running the game in 1080p with a high preset using 8 gigabytes of RAM, we managed to get an average of 248 frames per second with a 1% low of 187. As you can see clearly due to the uh, difference here in FPS, the game is a much more polished game and runs a lot more sweeter on systems like this. With 16 gigabytes, we managed to get an average of 253 frames per second with a 1% low of 198. And then we pretty much saw exactly the same with 32 gigabytes where we got an average of 253 frames per second, exactly the same as 16 gigabytes. But this time we had a 1% low of 194. Now the differences in 1% low here are just negligible. There's absolutely no difference here. It's just purely how the test was run. So overall, it doesn't seem to matter which game you actually play. It doesn't really make any difference whether you've got 8 gigabytes of RAM in a single channel. There's a slight variance there on frames per second. So if you really do need to push a game over the 60 FPS limit due to the rest of your system, you will want to at least run it in dual channel. But you can't really buy 8 gigabytes in dual channel. Uh, nowadays in DDR4, particularly if you go for RGB stuff. It doesn't really make that much difference if you use 16 gigabytes, and it doesn't really make that much difference if you use 32. So hopefully that brings an end to the debate of how much RAM you actually need to game in 2024. Of course, if you are using your system for other things like photo editing, video editing, you will want to maximize all of your RAM out there. And particularly for those who have a lot of applications running in the background and while playing games. But for those of you who just want a system together, to use like a games console where it just plays games or at least you can close all the other applications behind it to play the game that you want it doesn't really matter you can go for 8 gigabyte 16 or 32 64 gigabyte we'll see no difference at all so for those of you on a super budget it's probably not worth wasting your money build a system that's nice and moderate like this i would advise going for 16 gigabytes because it's going to future proof your system a little bit but it's clear to see we're not really at those maximum limits yet. Anyway, let me know in the comments below what you think of the tests today. Are there any other things that you would like us to change and maybe we'll do some more testing? I think we've done enough now, really, in my own opinion. We've tested something with a reasonably high-end machine with lots of VRAM and 3 dv cache and we saw no difference at all. We've tested something with a moderate system where we've got no 3 dv cache. We've only got 8 gigabytes of VRAM, which many people still say that is just not enough for gaming in 2024 but clearly it is because you can't play those kind of caliber games without uh, needing that kind of stuff so i think it's perfectly fine this system is actually a great one for anybody who wants to build a budget system at the moment the graphics cards are around 240 pounds these cpus you can pick them up for like 150 pounds or less Pretty sure i saw it go for about 120 recently the motherboards are probably going to cost you about 100 pounds but you could go for something cheaper it doesn't really make that much of a difference going for a high-end board or a low-end one particularly if you're on a budget they're going to perform exactly the same although you will probably miss out on some features but overall it's a great little machine and it runs perfectly fine regardless of the ram don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you like this kind of content and also let me know in the comments below are there any other kind of tests that you want us to do what other things can we compare out and uh, kind of debunk those things that people say out there and i'm sure as always i'll catch you guys in the next one